So my name is Ed Large. I'm the first visiting scholar at Kermit. I'm a Fulbright visiting scholar in the science and technology of music. Uh, I come from Florida Atlantic University, where I work with uh, some colleagues studying uh, the perception of rhythm and the synchronization of uh, internal rhythms with the rhythms of the external world, specifically music. So this is really interesting to us uh, from the perspective of understanding music. For most of my career, I've worked uh, on the perception of rhythm in music. And the idea that I've been exploring is the idea that um, uh, our perception of rhythm in music involves synchronization of, of internal or endogenous rhythmic processes with the external rhythmic stimuli in music. And I've prepared here a little demonstration for you. Uh, there are two metronomes here, and if we could think of one of these metronomes, perhaps, uh, as, uh, well, first of all, let's ask uh, what kind of endogenous uh, rhythmic processes do we have um, that might synchronize with external stimulus such as music. Um, these things we can think of as active or nonlinear oscillators, and an example of a nonlinear oscillator is, in fact, a metronome. Okay? So a metronome, one of the uh, properties of a metronome is that, that it can generate rhythms in the absence of any stimulus, just as we do when we walk down the street uh, or uh, breathe or when our heart beats. Now, one of the interesting properties of a nonlinear metronome is that it's able to synchronize to an external stimulus. So now, if you've ever listened to, your, uh, to the radio in your car when it's raining outside, like it is today, um, what, we, uh, what you uh, might experience is that you turn on a song and you have your windshield wipers going and for a while the windshield wipers will seem to be going in rhythm with the song, right? But if their tempo is even a little bit different after a while, they'll go out of phase with the rhythm of the song. So we can look at this here, like that. Now I've preset these metronomes so that they're about the same tempo, but what you see is their relationship wanders in and out. And if we wait for a few seconds here, they'll wander back in phase. Now they're almost exactly out of phase. We wait for a few minutes, they'll go back in phase. go. Okay, they're going back into phase. So this is the windshield wiper effect. Now, what happens is, if we put them on this little device which I created, now this is just uh, a couple of juice cans and a little plastic thing that separates uh, the different files in my drawer I found in there. What we can do is we can couple them together. And this is what happens when this, the idea is that this is what happens when you listen to music. So when you listen to music, there's the coupling that occurs from the sound of the music to the motor centers of the brain. And you get the two rhythms going synchrony. And let's see if we can make this work. I'll just start it out in synchrony so we don't have to wait for a phase or after it. Now what you can see is, see those Coke cans moving back and forth just a little bit. That's the coupling between one nonlinear oscillator and the other nonlinear oscillator. Now we could wait here for a very long time. These guys won't go out of phase now. They won't do a phase wrap. This is the principle of synchronization of nonlinear oscillators. Pretty cool, huh? So why did I come to Kermit? Well, I came to Kermit because uh, Kermit is in uh, the center of, of really an area right now uh, where there's so many people studying music cognition. Here at Kermit, which is uh, part of McGill, and at the new Brahm Center, which is part of UDM. So uh, I came here to do work on the perception of rhythm and the perception of pitch and the perception of tonality with the researchers here in Montreal. So. Uh, for example, with Carolyn Palmer over in the psychology department here at McGill, who's a, uh, also a member of Kermit. Uh, I'm looking at synchronization in music and language. Uh, with Doug Eck at University of Montreal, uh, I'm building models of uh, rhythmic synchronization, computer models. Um, 
with Steve McAdams, who's the director here at Kermit, uh, we're beginning to look now at psychophysics. So one of the most interesting developments in the past 10 years or so is that modern models of how pitch is perceived, how the cochlea works, the auditory periphery, uh, are also in terms of nonlinear oscillators. So we could think of this tiny hair cells in the cochlea as being nonlinear oscillators. The interesting thing is that if you put a microphone in the ear canal, you can actually listen to the cochlea generating sounds in the absence of any sound. Now these kinds of nonlinearities have important implications for the perception of pitch and the perception of timbre, and this is one of the major projects that I've come to Kermit to work on uh, with Steve McAdams. So we're building computer models for the perception of pitch. We are uh, comparing the predictions of those models to what uh, people hear when they listen to the sounds of different musical instruments and so forth.